The book that I've written is set in Paris. It's about the Americans who went there, what they brought with them as Americans to the experience, and how they were transformed by the experience, how much they learned, not just from what they were studying in the way, but how much they learned about life, about what matters in life, the whole culture of Paris at the time. History is much more than just uh, politics and generals. History is about life. History is human. And music, art, literature, poetry, theater, science, the whole realm of the human spirit is all part of history. The painters included Mary Cassatt and John Singer Sargent. They were both geniuses in their way, and they painted masterpieces. Others are less well known. George Healy was a very accomplished portrait painter who painted presidents, including Abraham Lincoln, painted the King of France, painted Otto von Bismarck. He painted everybody. Augustus St. Gaudens was the great sculptor of his time, uh, who left, uh, again, who, uh, monuments of, of uh, not just his, his genius, his artistry, but monuments to the history of our country, because they are subjects principally dealing with the Civil War. And, and in literature, there were people like James Fenimore Cooper, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Henry Adams, and in architecture, there were Richard Morris Hunt, uh, the first American admitted to the famous Ecole de Beaux-Arts as a student of architecture, H.H. H. Richardson. Physicians who went numbered in the hundreds, many hundreds, and I guess the best known of them, who was also a very accomplished poet and essayist, was Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr., the father of the Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that uh, he, he could learn uh, in two years in Paris what it would take 10 years or more to learn at home in private practice. Most American physicians of the day never went to medical school. There were very few medical schools in our country at that time, and they were very small. When we talk about what these young people brought home with them, I think as valuable and certainly as far-reaching in consequence as anything brought home by anyone was a whole new outlook toward African Americans that came home with the young attorney from Boston named Charles Sumner. Sumner went over to attend lectures at the Sorbonne. He was interested in everything. He felt his education was incomplete and that he needed to know more about everything. And while he was at the Sorbonne, he noticed that black students, African-American students, many of them from other countries other than France, were treated exactly the same as everybody else and acted no different from everybody else, dressed the same, had the same way of getting along with their fellow classmates and the rest. And he wrote in his journal that this was astonishing to him and that maybe the way Americans felt about African Americans was something they'd been taught rather than part of the natural order of things. 